Hello ghosts and ghouls, it's me Jack from Horror Show Art and I'm back with another mask rehaul. Um, this time I'm taking on the Henrietta mask from Evil Dead 2, this mask has been made by Trick or Treat Studios. Um, now before I've gotten started on this video, um, I have done a little bit of the work uh, that I wanted to do. So I've stripped the hair, she doesn't come bald, she comes with a sort of, it's a very plasticky synthetic fibre. Um, that's been glued in. So I've stripped that um, and thrown that away because I have absolutely no use for that. Um, something else I've also done is I've put latex in the eye holes. Um, because I display all my pieces, um, I don't uh, I don't wear them. So I've blocked out those eyes uh, with latex and that will be all blended in to the paint job and that'll look fine. Now what you'll see here on the cheek is I did try and strip this mask. I did have a little go. Um, I submerged the mask in water for a couple of days um, and then I tried peeling it in certain areas, that didn't work, so I took a Dremel to it and I just discovered it was just simply much too difficult. Um, the, the, the paint is really, really on there on this mask. And I don't know, this, you know, this one, this is one I'm excited to do because I really love the Evil Dead franchise, but I'm not, I'm not really 100% set on keeping it or yeah I'm not worried I can I can forego that extra level of detail because the paint on it is quite thin um, and what I do want to say is I think the paint job on this mask is actually really good um, you know me I'm not I'm not a big um, I don't tend to knock trick-or-treat studios I know a lot of people will will rag on them a little bit I think they do great work I think the sculpts in particular the, the artists that they hire I mean Justin himself um, and Connor DeLess and all, all, all of the people that they work with. Um, I think the sculpts are just so brilliant and we're so lucky um, as as fans and collectors to be able to, to have these things. And, you know, I, I'm a big proponent with a little bit of finessing. You, you, you do the work yourself or you reach out to the right artist. You can have something that is almost movie quality if, if you just put the work in. But that said, I think this paint job is lovely. I really do. There's a lot of colour in it. There's a lot of depth, actually, which... Trick or Treat Studios masks don't always get right. Um, and the blood is nice. Um, this copy looks at them just in this shot a little bit dull and that's because I have rubbed it down with alcohol because I'm ready to get to work on it. Um, so let's do it. So that is the base paint done. Um, I used a combination of washes and mottling to get into all those wrinkles. Um, and then, yeah, I've sort of been misting and spraying to bring out all the different colors. There's a lot of colors in the, the Henrietta makeup job in the original one from, from Evil Dead 2. Um, a lot of yellows, purples, blues, pinks, a little bit of green. Um, it's, I, I hope it's showing up on the camera because I can see it all here. Um, so yeah, that's the base done. I'm going to do a little bit of spattering now, only a little bit, because I don't want to muddy it up too much. And then I'll go in and dry brush uh, in the sort of details around the eyes and the lips and all the sort of creases of the brow and stuff like that. There we go. So I've now filled in all of the open wounds. I've gone in and dry brushed some darker eyes. Dry brushed in some yellow and some blue around the wounds. Get them looking sore and gangrenous, just like the screen used makeup. Got some blue around the lips as well. So the next plan is to go in and paint in any prominent uh, cracks or wrinkles that I think need more work. I mean, they're all pretty well filled in by the by the by the initial base paint job. Um, then I'll paint in that eye. Darken up that eye, do the mouth, the teeth, and she's uh, she's well on her way, she's nearly done. So it's actually um, currently later that same day from earlier, um, and I had to stop, um, and now it is the evening. 
Um, and I don't like to paint in the evening if it can be helped. Um, because I'm relying on false light and just things are so much easier to work with in the daylight. And by the way, the size of this piece is huge. Like, I don't know whether I'm doing it justice. Like, you can see that's my hand compared to it. It is massive. Um, so, yes, because I don't like to paint in the evening, um, I'm moving on. I'm going to do the hair because I've realised that I can pretty much work and do what I want with the hair. At least the base layers of hair. Um... And that's not going to affect anything that I'm going to do with the paints, like with the eye and the mouth and stuff like that. So I'm going to get started on the hair. So I have blended up. I didn't film it because it's very tedious. This is my blend of hair. It's got some white, subtle brown, some silver in there. Um, and this is the hair I've blended up. This is just some of it. I've got more over there. Um, and basically, the way I'm going to fix this hair to the mask is I'm going to glue some strips at the back so it comes down. Um, then I'll probably continue to glue sporadically as it goes up. Now the hairline, in the hair in the movie is, is wispy and sort of um, like very, very patchy. So once I've glued in all the bits at the back, I'm then going to go in and I'm going to punch in sort of all these little bits at the top. Um, if you work on latex masks and you haven't learned to hair punch, I encourage you to do so. Um, it is so much more simple than I ever thought it would be. And I do it on any piece that I have that calls for it. And it really, really elevates the entire thing. Um, so I'm going to do that this evening and then I'm going to call it a day and get back to this paint job um, when I've got some nice bright daylight. Here we go. Last night was a long night. Um, I glued in all of the base hair. All of this at the bottom is glued in. It's hard to see, but it is. And then I punched in the rest. So you can kind of see that sort of natural looking growth. Especially at the front, you can see it. Um, so that's all been punched in. Um, I didn't film any of the punching process. I didn't really get to document it because to be honest, it's um, it's quite fiddly. So I have to do it on my lap and I just didn't want to set up a camera. I didn't want to film my lap because I didn't want to get my face in it. Um, but that's done. Um, so before we do any sort of styling on it, I think basically what I'm going to do is brush it out of the way. Um, also, what you have to do when you do punch hair is I didn't know this uh, for a little while. Um, is you have to go into the inside of the mask and spread glue all over the head inside. So then the bit, bits that you've punched, they're, they're, they're in there now. They're not going anywhere, which is really, really great. Um, I really like, I enjoy this sort of patchy hairline that she has because it means that you can still see the elements of the sculpt and the paint job. Oh, she's gonna fall over. Um, and I hate covering up a, a, a gorgeous sculpt with hair. I always say it. If you've seen my werewolf video, um, I'll link it. You, you'll see that I just complain the whole time about having to put hair on the thing. Um, so yeah, we've got plenty of the sculpt retained. So my next job is I am going to paint in all of the detailed parts now. So I'm going to work on the mouth, the eyes, um, and I'm going to add blood to the wounds and get the wounds looking a little bit nastier. I am going to do blood coming out of the mouth because there are plenty of points in the movie where she has that. Um, and you know me, I just love the blood. Um, so yeah, I'm really excited about how this is coming together. Um, I, I must admit I wasn't super sold on this sculpt, but now that the hair's on it, I think, yeah, it's, it's starting to, it's starting to really come together and look like the movie. So here we go. So what I'm doing here is I really love, um, uh, experimenting with layering when I paint um, because I, I think the more depth a piece has the more interesting it is to look at um, the more lifelike it is and there's just there's just so much to be said about using depth um, so in a similar way to the way I achieve all these wrinkles and stuff um, I am the, the the paint that is on the mouth and the teeth at the moment is just paint that I have um, that has been on there from uh, 
all the base painting I did from all the spraying and the washes and stuff. Um, but if I want to make the teeth look sort of extra rancid, then what I what I do is I've got a little bit of isopropanol on this Q-tip, and I go in, and I rub, and you can see that it starts to expose that original white layer that I painted them in. Which is great because now we've got a lot of depth. We've got darker at the tops, darker in any of the little cracks that they've made. Try not to get any on the lip. I'll do it here as well. Oh, careful. Because then now I'll paint these teeth in a similar way to the way that I painted the entire piece. I'll paint the teeth with washes. Um, so then now you'll have darker in, in, in the gaps in between. Uh, darker at the top, darker in any of the little cracks, and it just gives the teeth some nice realistic depth. Um, and I'm always looking to do that when I paint in different ways. So, yeah, it's pretty cool. It's white acrylic that has been mixed with this Liquitex high gloss varnish. Um, and this is the same mixture that I used for the vomit on my Reagan mask. Um, I mixed green acrylic with that um, to make the sort of like glossy 3D vomit. Um, and I've done the same here with white. Um, and the reason I've done that uh, big, big Evil Dead 2 fans, if you're as big an Evil Dead 2 fan as me, will know that um, Ted Raimi, who played uh, Henrietta, had to wear this giant foam latex suit every day. And it was horrible and really hot, and in order for them to get him in and out of the suit, they covered him in baby powder, um, and then he would sweat so much in the suit that he would have this white liquid um the sweat would mix with the baby powder and turn into a white liquid and it would pour out of the suit um and there is a point in the film where henrietta is uh, floating horizontally and she turns her head and white liquid pours out of her ear onto the ground i'll try and find a still i'll include a still right here so the white liquid pours out and that is ted Raimi's sweat mixed with uh baby powder so as a reference to that, I'm just a nerd. I just like having fun with my pieces. So as a reference to that, I've made this white liquid that I am going to... Yeah, that's what I want. It's gonna pour out and down. Oh, it's mixed with the blood a little bit there. That's gross. So it's gonna pour downwards out of her ear. And that might be all I need. I don't know if I'll need much more than that. Um, maybe I'll do one more little streak. It's a shame not to. I do one there. So yeah, that's my uh, homage to uh, Ted, Ted Raimi's baby powder sweat. 
Um, and any fans, any really old dead fans, will clock that, and and I hopefully it'll give you a smile. Um, and that's that, that's very much how I like to approach these pieces. Um, I'm a huge horror lover. I'm a huge nerd, and I I just want to be entertained. Um, so that's how I, very much how I work. So yeah, and that's the paint job finished. I think I may well see more little things that I want to tweak and amend as I go. Um, but next up is styling the hair. Um, after the hair's styled and set, that's when I'll go in and I'll really gloss all of these bloody areas. Because some of them are still quite shiny from the blood that I use, but I have um, sprayed the whole mask with a matte sealant spray so that the water and the hairspray that I'm about to use on this hair don't uh, mess up the paint job. So, hairstyling, final touch-ups, and she should be good to go. So it's now been a week since I was ready to call this mask done. I'd done all the sort of finishing touches on it, the hair's all styled, I've, I've glossed everything. Oh, you may have noticed I've lost my voice <laughs> since I, I last worked on the mask. Um, so what I was going to do, I, I was going to call it finished, um, I recorded a little outro and I was going to take some cool pictures of it and that would be the end of the video, but then I realised that there was a sort of a way that I could really elevate this piece in such a simple way um, and I just so happened to have uh, some sort of white uh, lacy trim lying around as well as some old blue scraps of fabric um, so I went on eBay and I ordered a little brooch um, and I'm just gonna whip together using hot glue and a bit of <laughs> a bit of luck um, a little collar for her to match the movie um, and once I've done that she'll be completely done um, and we should have a piece that's pretty cool. So here we have our finished rehauled Trick or Treat Studios Henrietta Evil Dead 2 mask. Um, and I'm really, really pleased with it. Uh, I, It's turned out so much better than I thought it would, to be honest. Um, I, You guys heard me at the start of the video say, yeah, I probably won't hang on to this one. I'll probably sell this, probably get rid of this. Um, and now I've decided it is officially uh, going to stay in the studio. Um, because it's really cool. Evil Dead 2 is one of my favourite movies of all time. Um, I'm I'm more than willing to admit that I, I think I underestimated the sculpt. Um, I knew I knew the sculpt was good. I just sort of I, I didn't know how much it looked like the character. But once everything is together, it really really reads. Um, and you know it, it's all it was all su such simple little things. Um, and that's what you've got to remember is that these artists they sculpt these masks. Um, they don't imagine the stock paint job on it. They imagine these these really intricate, detailed paint jobs, just like the one that I've done. Um, and that's what these these sculpts really deserve. That's why I love working on these masks and seeing the transformations. You can see that nice hand-punched, patchy hairline. And how glossed all of the wounds are. It's really, really scary. It's very, very impactful. 
I really do like this piece. The collar, I'm really, uh, I'm really happy that I thought up that um, and that I wasn't done because I think the collar has really brought it all together and turned it into something just a little bit more special. It's like a proper bust now. I'm really happy with it. But yes, this piece is going to be staying with me. If you'd like me to finish one of these for you, you'd like me to acquire a Trick Treat Studios mask and do all of this work for you, then please get in touch. You can contact me on my Instagram at horrorshow underscore art. Make sure you follow there. I'm always posting things that I'm working on, items from my collection, and I always have loads of items for sale at any given time because I'm never not working. So please head over there, check out what I've got going on and get in touch if you'd like me to finish one of these masks for you. There's lots of options that, that I can do to sort of fluctuate the price. This would be the sort of top price model. But if you'd like it done without the sort without the hand punched hair, you know, with glued in hair or without the collar, then that'll bring down the price. Absolutely. So please do get in touch. You can always work something out. Anyway, I'm going to leave you with some shots of this mask. But please do like and subscribe. Check out my other videos. I've got lots of rehaul videos on there. Lots of videos showcasing my collection. Head over to my Instagram at horrorshow underscore art. Check out my Etsy store and my TikTok. I post the odd video on there as well. Thank you very much for watching. And until next time, they're coming to get you, Barbara. Then let's head down into that cellar and carve ourselves a witch.